meeting at 7.02 p.m. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. We've gotten roll call out of the way. Um, hopefully nice. everyone's had a chance to glance at um, the September 16th min minutes. Just as a reminder, we did not have any minutes from October. We did not have an official advisory board meeting in the month of October. So we are approving the September minutes. Is there a motion? Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? It's approved. Are there any members of the public who would wish to be heard at this time? Seeing none, we will move on to new business. All right. Um, not super creative for this month's icebreaker um, and would very much like someone else to take on an icebreaker for next time. Um, the question this month is what is one thing, since we've last come together uh, as this group, what is one thing that has been giving you joy in your daily life? Big, small, real, imagined. One thing since when? Since we last had a meeting together, so <coughs> September. I think I started talking about this a little bit with the girls, but I left my job. And I knew it was my employee. Was it? Yeah. And my, yeah, my husband went back to work, and I get my retirement for, wow. we'll, we'll see how long, <laughs> an indeterminate amount of time where I'm going to hang out with my kids. And it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, beginning of October. So, yeah. I'm like, you know, everyone's like, being a stay at home mom is awful and hard, and it is. But it's also awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have to work right now, so it's great. <laughs> oh, you, you're working plenty. You have little yeah. ones, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have a just under two and just over three, so. Yep. <laughs> it's full time. <laughs> I can go next. Um, my nine year old just finished, um, was part of the uh, Longmont High School music theater production of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the musical. And um, when I become a bit of a state and backstage mom, and I help sew the costumes for all the little Oompa Loompas, and um, it was good, it was exhausting. It was good, it was good. I know we're talking about you. <laughs> You're good, go get ready for bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, this will tell you something about my kids being at a different stage of life, but my eldest daughter has gotten me into Chapel Road. Oh, God. Uh, the artist. I mean, and... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I don't know. The NPR Tiny Desk concert, I, I highly recommend it. Um, she was on SNL two weeks ago, if you watch SNL, and yeah, my, my daughter's super into it. So I'm she and I are rocking out and I'm learning the H-O-T-T-O-G-O -O dance and all that. So yeah, just bonding with my, bonding with my tweens over um, super inappropriate lyrics. It's a bit of fun. One thing that's been giving me joy, extra joy lately, is I, I do take a dance fitness class a couple times a week, and um, I thought that I was doing it to stay active and healthy and get my mind off of serious things, and um, lately it's just become the thing that I look forward to to really get out of my head. Um, 
and it is joyful. It's you know, it's upbeat music and a lot of people who don't care what they look like flailing about in space and uh, I'm into it. Doing anything that makes you feel alive. Come on, Susie. Oh my gosh. So, I, yeah, I just got back from um, Tampa for the National League of Cities. So, I'm, oh, I'm pretty right. fried right now. <laughs> it was a lot of it was a lot of information overload. Um, it was good. Something that brings me joy at this present moment is next week we're off for a week. <laughs> I'm a school teacher, and they are acting like they are off this week. You guys, I, I mean, I had three that fell asleep. I'm like, I know I'm not that boring. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> stay with me. We have four more days. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, we'll have that week to rejuvenate and get going before the holidays kick in. Re, what grade are you? Do? Aren't you te- don't you teach third grade? I do. I teach third grade bilingual. Oh my god! I can't imagine three third graders falling asleep. Yes, and, and yeah, they look like the, one of them came in in their PJs and they had like their the bed head. I'm like, you, you literally just rolled out of bed and came to school. <laughs> so yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Joy, joy. <laughs> Well, I'll, uh, mine is, I think it was in between the last meetings, but I planned a quick weekend to go visit my brother in New York, which makes me happy to go see him and see a couple shows, so that'll be a nice little getaway coming up right after Thanksgiving. Yeah, what show did you see? Oh, sorry. Well, I... I will be seeing um, a new musical about Louis Armstrong, and another one that's oh. um, it's just it just came out, and then, then there's another one. Uh, I can't remember the name, but it sounds kind of quirky. But it's about two robots who fall in love, and I don't know. I rely on my brother a lot because he's in the industry. He's like, this could be quirky, but I like all the actors. I'm like, whatever you say, we're gonna go see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can't really choose between either one, so I'm just gonna do these two because um, one that just gives me joy every day. It's all the time, but just seeing my daughter growing and learning and being interested in things is just this awesome journey <laughs> um just to kind of see that like awe of everything in the world through a little kid's eyes so um that just is a daily thing for me but um kind of the same thing for my job um i find joy in it every day just being here and working for the library and working with our staff thank you thank you Next up, we're going to talk about art in public places. Kathy. Wait, Jamie, do you want to volunteer for next month? Yeah. I can do it. Oh, awesome. Let's put Kat down for December. Unless someone else is dying to do it. I'm not dying to, but I haven't done it. So I was going to volunteer, but if you have one, go for it. I'm happy to put you I can down do for the January next month. Yeah, and book two months out that was so so proactive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gives you plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, I'll think of it for <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably think of it. Thank you, Kat. I mean that that one writes itself with New Year's resolutions. <laughs> there you go. Kat got two in a row, so <laughs> put her in February. <laughs> So, okay, yeah. Yes, the segue is that art brings us joy. So now we're That's talking about one. art in public places. So the art in public places installation, and I don't know 
uh, if any of you have been in here to see it, but it's 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 right in here outside of our where we meet here physically, but just down the hallway, um, we have a new installation um, that came from Art in Public Places. And the art piece is an altar that honors two young men that were shot dead um, back in like 19, early 80s here in Longmont um, by Longmont police. It's a well-known story. Uh, if you don't know it, you can look it up. But um, And so it's, the art piece was created, I want to say around 2019 or 2020, and it was on, there was an exhibit for it at the firehouse, and then it was in the museum, the Longmont Museum, for a very short period of time. And that's been sitting in storage looking for a permanent home. And they approached the library before I was here, and the timing wasn't right for the library to have it. And so they approached it again when I was here uh, about six months ago or so, and I thought it'd be great to have, um, just because it's certainly a, a difficult moment in time in Longmont history, but it produced some good learning opportunities for Longmont out of this um, incident came El Comité, which is a, an organization here that some of you might be familiar with in Longmont, um, to support Latino community. They do a lot of great things. Um, that was definitely a product of this, of these two uh, Latino men that, that were killed. So um, it lives here now, and I'm very proud of that. Um, there was a dedication hosted by Art and Public Places Commission um, a couple weeks ago, I want to say, and uh, it was very powerful because some family members from one of the young men were all here and hadn't seen the artwork. Some of them hadn't seen it ever, and I can imagine how overwhelming that might have felt to see that. Um, it was, I, I didn't know all the relationships to him. One of them for sure was a sister. Two sisters were here. Um, so that was, it was just very impactful. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, maybe there'll be something in the paper about it. I know the Art and Public Places people did a press release on it. But, you know, uh, you find yourself here at some point, come down uh, the hallway, you know, where the meeting room is, and you'll see it. You can't miss it. It's three pieces. It's two ends that, um, it's like a memorial, right? The middle is sort of an image of them. And there's just a lot of great, the art piece itself is good, and then, of course, there's a, a write-up, just like in a museum you would see, and then there's a QR code you can scan to, see, to learn about the artist and um, mm -hmm. all that. So I wanted to mention that just because I'm really happy to have that here. And I think it, it makes sense in the library being a place, hopefully, of dialogue and conversation that it should be here so we can learn from these things. So I just wanted to share that. Couple of questions. Um, can you say anything about the impulse to bring that uh, that topic back to the library? Like, was there something that uh, made Art and Public Places reapproach the library? Yeah. So when they first approached the library with this, one of them is yes, it's the library, but also we. Have probably have the most space for a permanent location in the city, right? Being mm -hmm. a big building, I mean, mm -hmm. it's very practically, there's a space thing there that we that we probably have. Um, I, my understanding is when they approached the library before, with the idea, it was right in COVID and it was right after George Floyd, and so there was a lot of um, certainly conversations and, and hard things going on with police, and since this incident here involved police, you know, I think there, there was definitely some hesitation. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of speculating, I don't really know, but you know, the, the answer at the time was like, I don't think we're ready to have this here now, um, you know, and so I think enough time has passed, um, and they approached me with it, and, mm -hmm. and I do feel enough time has passed, and you know, now we can you know, I, I don't know what I would have done if I were in the same position back then. Mm -hmm. You know, just with a lot of heated things going on around police, and I don't know mm -hmm. if you want to present more of that, but now I feel like the timing is good. 
um, to have that and talk about it. And uh, I, I, I feel like that's come around a lot as far as police. I mean, I, I know, I, I, I'm not saying 100%, but you know, back then, like the whole defunding thing, and you know, there was just a lot of, a lot of hard feelings towards police and, and for very good reasons. I just think now I feel like we're in a better place where we can talk about that stuff and talk about what, what has been learned and where we can still learn mm-hmm. and what better place to have that conversation than here. So that's where I was going. I really hope you're quoted somewhere on this. Well, I, I was asked to provide a quote and that was pretty much something like that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it'll get <laughs> okay. <laughs> My mother-in-law is on the board, and she told me about it last night and how appreciative she was to you, John, that, that um, it seemed like that you were very easy to work with and very, you know, honored to have it, and that it didn't seem like you had much hesitation about it. And they were very, I know Art and Public Place was very, very excited and touched that you took it on. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. It's it's true. I had no hesitation. I think that when they approached me with a couple of commissioners and our public places administrator were anticipating the conversation and to kind of basically start the conversation, but the meeting ended with me saying, when can it get here? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I just there's just no question in my mind, I don't, um, which I'm, I'm happy for. I mean, it was easy for me, and I'm, I'm glad that it's been well received. I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait to see it. It's 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 stunning. It's an art piece. It's stunning. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so excited. Thank you very much. Yeah. Is the artist still around? Like. I I believe so, and I don't know if they're local. Yeah. There's something that tells me they might have been out of Denver or somewhere else, but I don't remember how that came about. Um, I haven't looked up the story in that detail. But I could. It's just the, a QR code right out there. Oh, cool. <laughs> and the process was really you were just able to to get an enthusiastic yes. You didn't um, need to have a, like a staff meeting about it. Or, I didn't feel like I did. Okay. I, I can understand back at the time when they first approached that you know it was a much different time. I mean, just four short years ago, but it was a very different time. And so I I just didn't feel like I needed to do that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, I thought it would be good for the board. Something to be proud of. Um, okay, board membership update. Um, so it is that time of the year where we are going to talk about um, the membership of this board. Um, we do have an update in that we will have two slots that we are filling this round. And shall I make the announcement or would you like to? I can do it, uh, but let me transition downstairs. I just okay. got my family upstairs, so I'm gonna get away from them. Give me two seconds. Yeah, and I will apologize for my faux pas and not clarifying beforehand um, who is going to speak first. It's like watching a spike meteor. <laughs> you know with the floating? Yes. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> I feel like an unnecessarily dramatic pause. That was that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's okay, we, we managed. Sorry, my son had a music recital that went until seven, so I, I've been, you know, switching gears. Yes, so I have decided to step away from the board for now. Um, I already talked to Jamie and John about it. Um, I'm mostly I'm doing it because I think it's the right thing for the board to have some fresh blood. Um, I think you probably can tell that I'm really frustrated and I've been on the board for over five years and have not yet succeeded in my major goal, which was to get more funding for the library. <laughs> um, and so I just feel like uh, I'm not bringing a very creative energy to this problem right now. 
um, and I want to approach it from a different angle. So I have been thinking about this for a while, um, but we've been like down a person for so long. You know, I didn't want to leave the board in a lurch. So in seeing that we had, you know, four applications for the one position and looking over the applications and feeling like they were all pretty cool, um, I felt like, okay, this is a better time for me to step away. And obviously Jamie has a few months now under her belt as president and, you know, I haven't done much to help with that, but I didn't want to leave her in the lurch either, stepping into that new role. Um, so it's a hard decision for sure. And, and it's definitely not just like, I'm too busy, because um, I've been too busy for a while. It's really more about, like, I just don't think I'm being effective in this role right now. And I really do care about the library, and I will continue to like show up to events and come as a member of the public when I can. And if you guys need some institutional memory and want to chat about anything, I'll do what I can. I don't have much memory left at this point. Um, but I do. I kind of feel like I'm beating my head against the wall, if I'm honest, just sort of saying the same things, you know. So I feel like you all, we all deserve some new perspectives, and we have the opportunity for that with these fresh, interesting people who have showed up and shown interest. So, you know, I definitely don't rule out joining again in the future if I'm allowed, uh, and working from different, per different angles on this issue. So if you have ideas about how someone can support your work in any way, you know, I'm all ears and hopefully can share my contact info, but um, I think it's time for a changing of the guard. We very reluctantly accept Kat's resignation. Um, I did uh, speak to Kat about staying on through December and she graciously agreed. So, um, the goal is in January when we are bringing in what we thought was one new member, we're just going to bring in the two new members and, um, and make that change at that time. So hopefully Kat is with us next month. Um, I know you, you almost always join virtually, but I always want to like bring treats for people. So we can discuss later, I, but if you if you could be here, we will be yes, treats. I, I did already have the thought, like I should really try and get my butt there in person next time for the last hurrah. So uh, yes, I will do my best. It is more likely because my classes are ending in a couple weeks here. So mm -hmm. I think it may, may lend itself to slightly more mm -hmm. mobility. <laughs> And I always will take treats. So. Excellent. I will find out what you like. Um, but and I also I also shared this with Kat privately. But um, there's so many uh, skills and strengths that Kat has brought to this board just in the short time that I've been connected to it. And when I came in, um, actually when I, when I first attended a council meeting to start sniffing around how I wanted to be involved um, in the city. Uh, my first exposure to the Library Advisory Board was watching Kat and our former chair, Cynthia, um, give comment uh, to council um, about our feasibility study that was done. Um, so her contributions to that, her ability to stand up and speak out whenever necessary, her tireless advocacy, is you're leaving a hole that I don't know how many members we're going to need to fill, to be quite honest. And the institutional memory, right? Uh, that is our institution, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but I also hear and appreciate um, your wish to make space for new energy, new perspectives. Um, and so along those lines, I I have this thing that I've been chewing on for a while, and I, I may have mentioned it here, but I did want, it, it felt like the right moment to bring it as a formal question or proposal to this board to see how we feel about it, and then if it feels like something we want to pursue, then we need to find out the how and the when and the, all the logistical details. But the idea is, I'd like to propose that we amend our bylaws 
to expand the size of this board from five members to seven members starting in 2025. So in my dream world, this could be figured out by July 1 and we would maybe try to um, fill another two seats um, in, in, you know, by then. Yes, Mooney Poynton? Uh, just oh. with Susie. Yes, yeah, Susie. You know, I just wanted to uh, thank Catherine for her work on this advisory board. And I've been the liaison to other advisory boards. And I've, I've mentioned this to John and Jeff and um, even others on council that you all are a very active board. As far, as far as what I see in regards to advocacy, participation, showing up, um, and, and even having, you know, okay, th these were our goals, these are our objectives, and this is what we're pushing. And, you know, and really holding my feet to the fire. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I appreciate that. And, you know, I, so don't feel like you haven't been successful, because you have, and, and the, you know, this is, what I would like to see in an advisory board, an advisory council. And there isn't a whole lot of power and authority you have, but just advise. And you know, and having having had the experience to to work with you all and and share in you all sharing, you know, what is needed and really articulating where the gaps are that allows us as council and even conversations that i have with jeff and john to how can we look at this and move forward and how can we move the rest of council forward so so there are some ideas in the works and you know it just just takes a long time like i did not realize you know i'm now coming into halfway through my second term and it's we're starting to move the needle and it's everything it just takes so long <laughs> um and i i i get i get frustrated with with that process like i, I want to see the, the change happen immediately and and it, it often doesn't and it feels like it's that we're not making a difference but i really feel like this group is you all are a very active group and and thank you for your for your work and your time and dedication to this so yeah yeah Thanks, Susie. Does anyone else have a, a comment or question? Um, well, I do. So just, I mean, we've talked a little bit, but what led you to think like the, going from a five to seven board, like how will that, mm -hmm potential impact mm -hmm. things? Um, I think it started with me noticing um, or just feeling that we were a small group. And I don't know if it was hearing or seeing um, maybe members of other advisory boards or commissions, um, either at council meetings or, um, but getting the sense that there were boards that were a little bit larger than ours. Um, but most recently, what what made me want to form this into like, oh, maybe we should really do this, is quite simply that at a population of 100,000 people with the level of diversity in our community, it feels impossible to recruit five people who are representative of that community. And when I think about the uh, the topics that have come before this board since I've been involved and the things that we're looking at in the future and listening to John and other library staff talk about um, expansion, talk about staffing, talk about ways to be more responsive to the community that we have now um, it feels that ha like having that diversity and representation is even more crucial. So, for example, we, we were not flooded with applications for, for the one spot that we uh, promoted. 
but what we got were some very strong applications from kind of one group of Longmont residents. And we talk a lot about making decisions to improve the library experience for all Longmont residents. And I don't see all Longmont residents represented in five people. It also kind of stinks that we need, you know, like to reach quorum for a five member board looks a little bit different, perhaps, but it, d it just seems to leave us very little wiggle room. So those are my thoughts. It's mostly about diversity and representation um, that, you know, we're advising council on the direction we want our library to go uh, to serve 100,000 people with very different needs and very different levels of access. So that's, that's it. And I didn't, I think there's precedent. I don't think that, I think there's another board or more out there that has seven members. I definitely think those are really good ideas I and mean, rationale, you know, for in, enlarging it. I think my only concern is for most of my five years, we've rarely had a full docket as it is. So, you know, it's aspirational. I love it. And I also think like, you know, it may take a while to build the momentum, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't shoot for that. Can it be lifted the range? Could it be five to seven? Does it have to be hard? Other boards because have been I, 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 I'm really, I really kind of agree with what Kev said. The fact that we, we we have a shortage right now, we we tried to fill two spots in the spring, and we were really lucky that we got a very good application, but we got one good application. Um, you know. I just think that then if, if we have it listed as that it has to be seven, then you kind of put in that quorum has to be four. Mm -hmm. And so then we're kind of in a pickle. I, I do think that it would behoove us to step up our outreach um, in, in finding, in filling any additional seats just from the past couple of rounds. I want to learn more about what um, we can do as board members to get the word out um, in more, uh, more targeted or more impactful ways. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely hear what you're both saying and I'm not saying it would be easy, but I think it's, worth trying and if we are able to kind of live in more of a range um, that would just be something to keep working toward yeah I mean I I have had numerous conversations with people about joining our board I even had a conversation with one of the assistant city managers about advertising about open board positions. Mm -hmm. And so I don't you know, um, you know, until it gets to a critical place, they kind of don't spend money on it. Because I had seen in the spring, um, yeah, that's a good idea, Susie. I had seen it in the spring where they had been advertising in local, in online newspapers for critical board openings, critical ones, not all. And we were not considered critical. And so we were not part of that. And I was curious about it and I asked her about it and, and basically to kind of, it takes a certain level of, of, of need before it gets targeted. And I said, well, what about just open enrollment period in general, open application season in general, like throwing some advertising behind that. And you know, 
I don't know. I mean, the budget is so strict in a given year. It's something that has to kind of be planned for two years in advance. I don't always know how much wiggle room there is there. And so it's, it's kind of on us then. And like I said, I've had a number of conversations with people, although not with anybody that Susie just mentioned. Um, so I just would be really apprehensive about putting it in the bylaws as part of stone. And also, I agree with you, Jamie, about the diversity thing, but I think you also have, also have to keep in mind that this is, an, this is an unpaid volunteer position. And we think nonprofit work deals with this issue all the time. And when you have a socioeconomic divide, the people who have the time to volunteer should be out volunteering. But then it's just a matter of, yes, are they representing the voices of the people who do not have to the volunteer? Mm -hmm. And um, I, it's not it's not going to be perfect as long as it's an unpaid volunteer position. You're not necessarily going to get the, the people that I think what you're saying that we need to represent better. And I think it's just then a matter of making sure that we have people who can speak for the, the, the people who don't have we don't have time to, to do what we do. Mm -hmm. Which is why Susie's suggestion is a very good one. Oh, we may have this in the chat. Sorry. About that yeah. Yeah. I have talked to a number of people through my work. Um, I was disappointed that none of them seem to have submitted um, an application um, and in in those conversations um, some of what you said Katie came up but I also spoke with people who uh, would have would have added something different to this group and they had the availability and um, I'm just yeah I, I don't want to give up just yet, even if it's something that we have to build over time into the future, because I think about uh, setting this board up for not July even, but for you know a year down the road for for what we don't know yet. No, I agree with you, and I think I could support it if it was a range and if we left it that quorum is majority as as a board members without mm. defining what the number of quorum is um but i think we would have to for me to support it it would have to be a little bit softer does anyone know what the rules are yeah susie had to break up a cat so. yes susie may know um but outside of that, I have to look. I don't know if, you know, that, that's something that might be in a city charter or something that defines that. I don't know if you can have a range like that. Who is the person that so I can ask clerk. the clerk? And we can, we can add, like through Tracy, or you can ask. Okay. But I mean, we're happy to help. But I, I, I do know who to ask. I also would be very curious to know that cat is giving me joy right uh, now. Oh, that was the fighter. She was the one that was getting bullied oh, by the younger Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, then we can flirt with this one. She's yeah. not yeah. She's a lover of food. <laughs> I'm also curious if there's a rule that a board member has to be 18 to be on this board. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. When I worked in Englewood, I don't know about regular board members, but mm -hmm. there was specifically a, like a student liaison, mm -hmm. and we recruit through the high school. I've been talking to some other yeah. folks from other communities whose boards have youth members. On yeah, them. that's basically what it was. Mm -hmm. So, Jamie, one of the questions in the application says, "Have you been a voting member mm -hmm. in Longmont for at least a year?" Mm -hmm. So there would have we would have to kind of figure out how to define the transmitters differently for a team. But I think that's very interesting. I feel like we did look into this at one point in the past. Um, this is why we need you. Cat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a vague memory. But when you said that about the application, it triggered something in my mind. 
because yeah, I have a lot of students in the past who serve on like city advisory boards, and you know, some of them on the long run advisory board, um, team advisory board, or whatever. But I don't know, John, does the does the library already have a team advisory board? There's a there is a team. Um, yeah, they're not called an advisory board. Team advisory group. It doesn't matter. So yeah, they had to. Yeah. They weren't allowed to be called a board because. <laughs> anyway, there, there's a team group. Yes, that's the point. I wonder if they could be sort of like at least informally invited. I mean, they could always come as members of the board, right. but get yeah, could get back to say, Were you okay? Yeah, we could. Yeah, like, and say, if we like, could once a quarter or something, you know, okay. just like we do with the friends, where we just try to we're trying to kind of form a lot of stamp getting together with them once every quarter or twice a year if we do something like that with Paul Mettler is already on your team board and just I think to, to Jamie's point about hearing more voices in a more formal method I think that's a really good one yeah I suspect that they're probably not allowed to be voting members of a board since they cannot vote Correct. in elections yet. But they, yeah, but can we have them come once a quarter and just present to us and let them share their thoughts with us like we did with the, the joint board meeting last week? Right. Yeah, or if like presenting is stressful or something, they could also just be invited to come and, you know, contribute in a more, you know, just sit in anytime, but maybe every so often they could do a presentation if they'd like. Some students like to present, you know, and they really enjoy that sort of platform, but also I wouldn't want to scare anyone away. I don't know, you know, what would appeal more, but we can maybe talk with them about what they would like too. I do like this idea. It is another idea though. My understanding is that the team uh, council or whatever, they, they exist to advise the library. Yes. Whereas this exists to advise council. And so it, I, it might appeal to a different individual who wants to explore civic engagement a little bit more deeply. Um, there was one woman I spoke to in particular I think she's affiliated with CU, but she's also involved with a number of nonprofit boards, um, including um, one in Lafayette. And she had like a really articulate way of um, distinguishing between having a youth board and having um, youth on your board with adults, having it be intergenerational. Um, I, it sounds like the voting requirement might be like a Walmart requirement. And so we would have to think about that, you know, think around that. But even to get some 18 year olds, you know, 18 to 25 younger voices, um, it's tricky, I, does, I understand. Does anybody know if you're allowed to just like post flyers at Front Range? Because I was over there voting the other day, and there were definitely people just like hanging around in like a student commons type area. Mm. Or if there's ever like a um, like an activities fair, I wonder if we could set up and you know just kind of like reach out through to the like you know twenty something set. Um, I know community college is a wide range of people, but you know um, it could also be like an important subset of the city that we don't have necessarily represented. Um, and I live right there, so I could go poke around and ask a little bit. But I, I don't know anyone there. I once almost got approved to teach a class there, and then COVID happened. <laughs> it fell apart. But I at least know the English department here. So. I, I think there's definitely a way to get the messaging there. Um, I'm more curious about, like, what are our limitations as board members? Like, does everything have to go through official city channels, or are we allowed to make a flyer and that sort of thing? I think it's the city. So what I was saying, I was going to ask Sandy if there are flyers that we could create, maybe with a QR code that would link people directly to the um, application. That any it. Anyone as a citizen of Longmont can go in 
ask and distribute, put those flyers up. Right. There. Capacity, I'm just, you know, a volunteer or resident and want to let folks know about these upcoming openings. Yeah, that's something that would be really easy for me to help with. If we, you know, decide that we want to open up and have seven seats or a range of, you know, if we decided that there's more options in 2025, I could certainly help with that as a member of the public. I can do whatever I want. Yes, you can. Whether, whether we move to a larger board or when that happens, um, I still think that we need to explore these creative ideas for filling vacancies um, just to get the word out a little bit more widely because not everyone that we would want to engage is necessarily visiting the, the city website looking for those opportunities. Um, I believe the applicants that we have right now were either proactively seeking those opportunities or they saw um, something in print or in the in the paper I think from the city um, so yeah I'm all for being a little innovative and um, finding out how to reach uh, Longmont residents who care about the library and um, where they are wherever they are <laughs> um, so maybe this is enough for tonight in for this question it sounds like um, we need a, a, a bit more information um, if we can't express our membership as a range for example then um, it's kind of back to the drawing board it sounds like for now but I just wanted to float that idea and get everyone's initial impressions um, if like well, all things being equal a slightly larger number of folks sounds like it could be a good thing I mean I would I would be in favor of it I don't know if you want to put it to a vote right away just to like see where everybody's at or if you want to give people time to think about it so we have to find out if it's a possibility. Yeah, the vote would be like, are you okay with me pursuing this and, and getting more information? Because I'm not going to right. invest and the time and effort if y'all are going to vote it down. I'm always in favor of gathering information. Okay. Thank you. So, the two openings that we have now. Um, has everyone been able to look through those three applications? Four, three, or four? four. So one was, there, yeah, there were four initially, but one member, Barbara, um, did end up rescinding her application. So oh, okay, okay. okay. So the, the ask from this board is we need to be make, we need to make our recommendations um, to council to the city. Who are we making recommendations? Um, technically, yes, it's a council. Um, it goes through mm -hmm. the city clerk, but yes, it's being recommended to council by Friday. So. Um, Who we'll interviewed them? Well, we haven't interviewed them yet. Oh. Okay. So we're looking for who's available. We're playing the game of who's available to interview uh, virtually. Um, one to three applicants between now and Friday. And did, do we have time slots already? I do, yes. Um, I have two yeah two members um
Um, two members only have like one slot really that will work. So Wednesday, 12:30 between 12:30 and 2 p.m. Um, for one of them, and then we have a slot from 4 to 5 on Wednesday, 4 to 5 p.m. And then a slot on Thursday, 3 to 5 p.m. And then a final slot, 3.30 to 5 p.m. for that same time. Say the last one one more time. 3.30 to 5 on Friday. On Friday. On what? On Friday. Oh, well, that's my best availability, but I have some availability on other days too. And the interviews themselves are only 10, 15 minutes, right? For um, yeah. There were different lengths for different kinds of boards, but I think I read about 15 minutes for the advisory boards. Uh, Wednesday midday works for me. What was the window? 12 to? 12.30 to 2, that one? I think so, yeah. I think that I'm going to double check one other place, but should. Katie, Nicole, if there are slots that you're available, you could just like let I us can, know. Yeah, I can only do the Wednesdays, I think. I'm traveling for the end of the But both of those Wednesday slots could work? Yeah, it, it'll be an interesting day, but yeah, I think I'll do it. <laughs> there might be a screen yeah, I can make for one of them. But. Oh, yeah, I'm good for 1232 on Wednesday. Any of the others, Pat? No. No. What about you, Katie? Me Friday is a Friday, maybe, but I'm supposed to be subbing till four, so. Okay. If, if, if it's a somebody needed to tag, if it was like a tag team situation, I might be able to help out like on the second half, you know, like get back by 4.30, but I don't know how much that would help. What was the time, what were the times? Um, we're back. For what were the times Thursday? Thursday three to five p.m. Friday three thirty to five p.m. There's also a time slot from Friday or sorry Thursday morning nine right. to nine thirty. That's really the only time that works for one applicant. So that one's pretty much locked in. Oh, welcome! I'm in class all those times. Right, so there's one applicant who can only meet from 9 to 9 30 on Thursday. Correct. Okay, I can make that work if nobody else can, just if that's the only time that they can meet, I guess. I can actually, I can do that. Huh? You can do it virtually, right? Yes. They will if be. That helps. Oh, that helps. Yeah. Right, because they have to be recorded, right? Yeah, they will be on Zoom. How are we? Providing our feedback after this. Mm, good question. Especially if we're only meeting with one person each or something. You know, like a one on one. Right, that kind of makes it weird that we're not all. Everyone's like this. Well, if the Zoom is if the Zoom is recorded, I guess we could all make sure that at least two people watch at least every interview. Mm -hmm. Even That's if one person has to like conduct it, you know, on their own. But since this group isn't meeting before Friday, how are we? Can we make a Google form to fill out? Like a, like yeah. a vote by email? Yeah, or just like, yeah, I mean, just whoever, we can sort of make a debrief form of some kind so that everybody can see the comments that whoever interviewed had. I don't know if a form mm -hmm. is because we can't email each other. Right. Do, can't email everybody. Do those need to be made public? If it's um, just two or less people, then. So, you know, the, the easiest, it's not easy. The best way is to have the same two people do all the yeah. free interviews. Mm -hmm. Because then you, oh. then you can talk about them and make a recommendation on behalf yeah. of the board mm -hmm. without that. Because if you bring in a third person, it constitutes a meeting and it has to be posted. Oh, so, right. Yeah, so. But that's at, it at one time, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't we all have to vote on who our recommendation is that we're sending to council? 
or well, or can you agree well, that whoever's interviewing yeah, has yeah. the authority to make recommendations? Correct. So if you can't participate, you could just assume that whoever is, or just Ooh. that it's the chair's decision. I mean, but that's a big ask for two people to do all those time slots. There's, well, it doesn't there's have three, to be. three 10 to 15 minute interviews. It's three. Oh, yeah. And will it be, will the interviews be on YouTube or would we just be able to get a link for any of the interviews that one or the other of us couldn't attend? I mean, what are the options there? Mm -hmm. It sounds like I who can do that Thursday morning one. Well, I can. How do we make sure that other. Well, yeah, Nicole can do Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm available for all of them. Okay. Well, then, Jamie, I nominate you to go to all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Okay. But if you have one other person, yes. if either yes. Katie or I can do, I don't know what the other two, if that's if that Thursday morning is only one person, are the other two, are either of them Friday? Yes. Okay. One, that last afternoon. 3, 3 to 5 p.m. slot, that's one slot for one of the applicants. She has a couple other potential options. So that last Friday, the 3.30 to 5, between that and no. It's in that window. Okay. Yeah. But it, it, could, we, could we do it with only Wednesday and Thursday and not Friday? Because I can make some of the Wednesday ones. I'm not sure, Katie, what other ones we could make. I can make them. There's, some are more convenient than theirs. Um, yeah, so that Thursday time slot for the one applicant is the only time slot that works for that person. So the Wednesday and Friday are for the other two, essentially. But the other two could both be on Wednesday and could just not yes. be Friday one? Okay. Yes, yes. So then I could have, um, then I could yeah, have all of them okay. too, as long as they're not Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Or, or later on Thursday. That'd be great, yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think especially because, you know, Jamie is one of the longer tenured members and Nicole is the newest. I kind of like that perspective. If like Nicole has the availability to do all of them too. If I, if I, what was that? If I'm one of the longest, that's... I said longer. I know, but <laughs> I just got here. Well then, if that works, you So should I not? It's fine. <laughs> It's fine. Should I not come then into that one because then we it turns it into a meeting? I think for the interviews it's okay. I was just saying any conversation after. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anybody can come to the interviews. Oh, okay. I just, I just think as interviews go, you probably want two or more. Like we can't schedule a Zoom meeting for all of us to come together after the interviews and discuss. Right. Because that would uh, that, right. But, that's but, a meeting. Yeah. But, in multiple, but in multiple of us were to come to the interviews, we could just kind of email Jamie our impressions singularly. Yes. That's not Okay, so we can just get invited to all of them on Zoom and then attend the ones that we can, knowing that at least yeah. two people will be there. Oh, okay. I think that works. And then we know it's going to be the Wednesday slots and Thursday morning. Love it. Whew. And if they need our recommendation by Friday, probably getting rid of that three to five slot on Friday evening is probably not very ideal anyway. Because that even doesn't give enough time for, for Jamie to, for us to email Jamie, for, uh, for Nicole and Jamie to chat. I mean, there's just not enough time in it. Yeah. So I think if we could get rid of that Friday slot is probably better logistically too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at you. I know. <laughs> He's supposed to be reading right now. She's reading our minds. Were we supposed to say anything about the applications at this time, or just the logistics of, you know, these are all viable applicants, they all come with different strengths and backgrounds, and they're all deserving of an interview, so we figured out the logistics of the interviews, and 
think that's all you need to do in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then we can consider this agenda item done. Thank you. Um, as always, I'm really appreciative of this group's um, just willingness to be straight and forthcoming and say what is needed and, and point out what is a question or a concern and um, just appreciate that we can work together that honestly um, and just figure out our challenges. Good. Um, so, I wanted to have something on the agenda to not go over um, the election results in specific, um, but really just to have a space uh, for questions, thoughts, um, concerns or ideas around how we might um, imagine the potential impact as it pertains to the library and our work together um, moving into 2025. What are things that we need to tune into, maybe look at more closely, um, anticipate in terms of proposed legislation or um, yeah, input from the community. Um, it could be things that even, you know, I'm curious whether you or staff are, are hearing or experiencing anything in these first couple of weeks that are giving you a glimpse of what might be around the corner uh, for the library. Um, yeah, so, so not really much more formed than that, but if you find your thoughts about uh, library advocacy shifting somewhat, um, it would be, yeah, it would be interesting to hear. I mean, hopefully local and state politics are going to be insulated a little bit from the uh, vagaries of whatever's happening at the federal level. Um, but I definitely think it may embolden certain sectors of our community who have attitudes or agendas that might be at odds with some of the values of our library and our city as a whole. Um, I mean, I think that's a very valid point. I think, you know, at, at the federal level, the thing that um, certainly is concerning um, is things like um, IMLS, which is Institute of Museum and Library Services, which the state library here gets much of their funding through. Uh, in in the last uh, from 2016 to 2020 that was also a threat that that might go away and ended up not you know but I, I I can see that resurfacing so that could impact things like we get a grant from the state library uh, pretty much every year that's been going on and that's through IMLS funding we get about a little over twenty seven thousand dollars a year to spend on collections because of that so that's a big chunk of money yeah um, you know, there's plenty of other things at the state library level, but that's something that directly impacts us and other things that the state library does. So that's something I, you know, kind of watch. I think um, that I, I have heard from some other director colleagues that are in library districts in some ultra conservative, conservative communities in, in Colorado that are already facing some real threats of certain people trying to get on their board of trustees um, and start to change things right now um, that, that fit more within that model. And, and as you point out, Kev, that, that could be perceived as threats to what our values are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm 
saying that because I'm grateful for the structure we have currently and the, the board we have here. And, you know, I mean, we certainly have to continue to advocate. That's mm -hmm. never going to change. Um, I think that the challenges we have, which is primarily, you know, advocacy and funding, um, won't change. I don't know that anything at that level is going to really affect that here. You know, so I think the work we do is the same. The work this board do and the library does is the same. Yes, I saw like this may be irrelevant, but like I saw a lot of kind of chatter about like panic about oh I need to go and buy all of these books and like various circles of mine that were just basically like oh they're going to you know, take away, yeah. you know, but, and I think, I think what's, I think there, there was one interesting thing that came out of like, a lot of those conversations was this idea of, um, for example, when um, access to abortions was reversed, and especially in Texas and stuff, a lot of communities, doctors, and for example, um, before even getting some kind of law or legal like challenge or, you know, punishment for performing these things would stop providing, you know, services to their community. Um, before, like, you know, before there was even a, a kind of threat. And I think that would be potentially one thing to watch out for, to be concerned about, is um, making sure that the library is not anticipating any threats from, you know, any changes that happen um, before there's actually an actual threat, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. I think you have to um, be aware and but not overreact. You know, and and know your community too. You know, I mean, the the those voices that are out there that you know maybe more on the like the pro censorship side kind of stuff. You know, we've been very fortunate here. We haven't had a lot of you know, and that that's that's true a lot in this area, a lot along the front range really. So it's you know, the that kind of thinking is prevalent here, and I don't know that this. You know, I think as a state, Colorado's in a good position. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's also you can't be blind. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just like turn an eye to it and just assume everything's going to be fine because you don't know. And you know, I'll say like the you know, it, it's easy in a conversation like this to maybe get too in the weeds, but um, the one thing that for me, that I uh, will pay attention to is the whole Project 2025. Um, there's some real concerning things in there that does affect libraries and education, and um, you know that's that's something that is pretty concerning to me. That you know, people can start um, advocating and pushing for, you know, trying to get some of those agenda items through. So I, um, oh, go ahead. It, oh, okay, thanks. Um, so I just wanted to, to chime in a little bit in what I, I saw at the National League of Cities, you know, among different municipalities across the nation, the biggest concern is what's going to happen to the federal funding. So looking at, so being cognizant of uh, at, if they cut departments or if they cut kind of those um, more pro programs that would be deemed, you know, socialist, that <laughs> read the, reach the greater masses and are free and, um, you know, those always run the risk of being first to be cut. So, you know, looking at how we can have a structure where, you know, we're, we're cognizant of that, finding other ways to offset the, those impacts. Um, I think, um, you know, just, I, I don't think the threat, I feel like we should just continue doing what we're doing. Yeah. There are other things, and now more than ever, do we need to have a strong library in the sense of um, providing resources. So I, I had just, right before coming on to this one, we, I had a union seminar where we were discussing discrimination and knowing your rights. I'm getting already a lot of questions around, you know, I work at a Title I school, the majority of my kids are immigrant students. and 
you know, the, this whole fear of mass deportations, what's going to happen? Well, there are rights that any human being has. And once you step foot on this, on this soil, you are under those, those rights. So getting, getting the word out and, you know, having, we might have to be that conduit to, to residents where we have a, a, a boardroom of one of the workrooms open, connecting with Interthambio or El Comité to do a Know Your Rights um, training or some kind of workshop there. You know, I've gone to the library several times with El Comité doing um, documentation for citizenship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So having those doors open um, for people to get the information they need and access to to computers. So I feel for us, you know, we just keep doing what we're doing and being mindful of what's what's happening around us and filling those needs as they start happening. So that's excellent. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, John, I don't know if you want to answer this or not, but do you feel like should an issue arise like the city has your back like the city because i know the buck kind of stops with you right in terms of the process for how people you know challenge a book or whatever um so do you feel like you know in conversations you've had that the city council is aligned with you know what i think our board is aligned in alignment about i do I, i i do feel confident with that and with the city leadership as well and you know the city too it, it, with in, within the city you know there's a lot of work equity work being done um, you know there's staff positions that are focused on that and I think a lot of the the things that I think we're kind of thinking of that Susie brought up are all equity issues and I think the city I feel confident they're not going to stand for things that are not equitable and therefore would have my back because neither will I. So I think we're in alignment there. I feel pretty good about that. Great to hear. Yeah. I do expect that in the new year, as in 2020, the library as an essential service will become more apparent. Yeah. That, that layer of who the library is and the role that it serves in the community. Um, yeah, will perhaps stand out as less recreational um, the way that it did in 2020. We will be very aware of how needed um, it is on, on so many levels. Well, this is this has come up here before about these essential, and actually this, I don't want to put this to bed if it's not ready. This actually leads very well into the next agenda topic of okay. strategic planning, actually. But we, if we're not ready, we'll move on. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not the one to move the agenda. That, that's your job. <laughs> I, I don't want to disrupt the flow. Okay, so okay. So, you know, when we talk about essential, so the, the old business is the library strategic plan update, which I wanted to give you all an update of where we are as staff as we continue to work through this. but. You know, even from the beginning of it and what's apparent to me, and, and now even just hearing this conversation too, there's a lot of aspects I see coming in the plan that really talk about the essential nature of the library and, you know, being kind of the place for many things. Um, and so, kind of bringing all this together, you know, like with, you know, where can people go for information and help, you know, in this environment that we're in and, and what we're all looking towards which may bring a real real need for people to get services or information you know we're going to be maybe even more essential than i feel that we are now and so you'll see that reflected as we continue to work through the strategic plan right now um the the current status of it you know, we had this retreat a while ago, and then as, as the leadership team meets, when we meet every other week, we talk through it, and we have formulated a, a new mission statement for the library. Um, we are, are working through a vision statement and value statements currently. 
And I think, you know, so far from the work we've done as a group, I feel really good about what's coming out. And it's very strong language, a lot of it about being essential and leaders in this community, the library being a leader. You know, not passive, not not recreation. It's, it's extremely important. And I think that it, a lot of language and those values you'll see. And I'll be sharing that, obviously, with the board as we have things formalized along the way. But um, that's where we're at now. And as we talk as a group about those, I'm kind of piecing together that retreat where we came up with main themes and thinking about how that's going to work into a plan of probably five kind of core concepts, which would be right now, I think is, you know, programming, um, services, resources, and literacy would be our, our big kind of key concepts that then, of course, within there would have goals and initiatives that carry us through the next five years and what that looks like. So just, just to give you an update, and not, nothing real concrete there, but we're making progress and I, I believe by maybe the end of the year, or at least sometime in January, we'll have it more formalized. I'll present it here, and, and then it will be our 2025 to 30 plan. But the word essential is in the new mission. Mm -hmm. so. And you said that's been formally adopted? By the group, yeah. By the group. By the leadership team. I don't see any changes to it, okay. you know, so I can actually bring that forward. I was just kind of waiting for the other aspects of those those bigger concepts with the core values and then kind of bring it as a package here. And yeah. Talk through it. Um, as, as you all might know, Jamie participated in the retreat to represent the board and the, the community and also did the extra work to help formulate that mission statement. So um, I liked that aspect, not just for Jamie's input, but to have the board, effectively the board's input in the community in that mission statement. I mean, that's what it means, but we'll still um, bring that back here. But of course I want staff buy-in and to feel behind that, you have to have that right, anyone knows that. So at least in our discussions and what we came up with, you know, I can, I can just sense a real energy behind it. And it's just a very powerful mission statement that's much more uh, almost aggressive in nature than what we have. Bold. Bold is a better yeah. word. That's, that's nice. Oh, I like aggressive. I think with that. Yeah, you do, Kat. Yeah, I think you'll like it, Kat. And actually, maybe in December, since that might, sounds like that will be your last time, that'll be a good time to share it. So. So that's my update on the strategic plan. Has any of those those uh, strategic planning conversations can um, oh gosh are they are they being revisited um, through the lens of you know what the next administration might bring in? Not specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, you know, even just in this conversation, me reflecting on what's there, I think it's just extremely relevant. Mm -hmm. It just kind of worked out that way. But you, I, I, I harbor serious fears for the federal level of things, and I'm very grateful that we live in a state and in a city that. Um, has the protections in place for our access to free, to information and um, the way you know the libraries are uh, allowed to be here? Um, it was very disheartening for going into the weekend. I'm just on my phone and um, start seeing uh, posts on social media from a group called uh, Parasol Patrol. They are a um, group of volunteers who will go to events like Drag Story Time and they will encircle the performers and the children and and protect them with these rainbow parasols. Oh, I know that. From any protesters who yep. are being disruptive. Yep. 
and uh, similar if you're familiar with the um, the angels who go where the Westboro Baptist Church protesters might go, um, and with their wings they shield. Um, I think it's mortars at a funeral, typically, um, from you know just hateful things. Um, so yeah, the call went out from the local Boulder Carousel Patrol that there was a story crime scheduled for Saturday at the Boulder Library. And um, based on the comments that were being left on their promotional posts, meaning the library's posts, based on the comments, they were calling like all hands on deck. We're expecting, you know, we might get nobody, but you know, People are being very, very uh, free uh, and and overt in their threats. Um, and I was not able to go, but I felt like I saw I saw it twice in my feed, and I was like, oh, I really wish I could go, and I want to follow up and find out how it went. Um, because yeah, maybe that's my naivete in thinking that that was not um, necessarily a big problem in Boulder. Yeah, well, that's a good example of what I was alluding to earlier. Of I feel confident, but we can't take this for granted. Which is always I feel the confident, case. but so do a lot of other people. Yes. That's, I mean, that's what I meant when I said people might be emboldened too. You know, I, I, I would be very curious too if, if the people coming to protest are local, because I think sometimes communities that are known to be, you know, wherever you want to say, um, but hateful, um, at least overtly hateful, uh, they may be targets for out of towners, you know, to make a statement. Um, so we might come up against that too if we're if we're known as sort of a even of acceptance, God forbid. Do you want to just go right into your director's report? Yeah, actually, I I don't have anything additional for my director report this morning. Oh, okay. Well, I'll uh, friends of the library. Uh, so last month we had a lovely conversation in a larger room um, in, in lieu of the joint meeting of the boards. Um, it was basically the friends meeting agenda, their board meeting. Um, and then we got to ask questions and share comments and learn more about each other. Um, it, it was a good conversation. Um, they are definitely moving forward in terms of thinking about how to be more efficient in their operations, how to um, increase both membership and revenue in, in some more out of the box ways, thinking about um, events and um, I think it's just a very real question what the capacity is for this group of volunteers to do more than it's already doing. Um, they're also looking at ways of just doing what they do more efficiently and effectively. So their next book sale will be, I think it starts on December 11th. It's in there. It starts on the Wednesday. Ever. Yeah, December 11th through the 14th. Um, and I think they're adding some, a, a couple of elements to try and boost membership, people signing up for memberships. They're um, expanding the membership model to offer more options and more incentives and more. Uh, opportunities for engagement with their members and also um, just you know, promotional marketing ideas for um, selling more books and, and some library branded merchandise, things of that nature. Um, 
So I do hope that we can revisit the joint board uh, idea in the spring. Um, and yeah, if, if there's anyone who you know in your network who you think would be um, maybe a better fit for uh, that volunteer group, um, I, I know that they could use some new uh, some new members who really want to do stuff. So they're looking for people, volunteers to help with social media and event planning and um, maybe you know some more uh, fundraising. Katie, you were there. I know you you didn't hear a whole lot because of the way it was. It just worked out, but um, yeah. Do you have any thoughts or reflections from what you did experience? I think they're a very impressive group, and um, they doing a lot. And I actually at times had moments where I was worried about potential burn. Because I think they're actually already like pushing and pushing hard. I think that they really, I think they're a very impressive group. I think it, I think what they're doing is remarkable. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. I do think that uh, I've just heard in little bits that since getting more attention in the local media and uh, winning the award and so forth, they are Their starting award, yeah. to hear more um, from more people who want to get involved and um, I hope that that just continues but, to build momentum. Yeah, because I think that's what it would take. I think that group is already like pedal to the metal the whole way. I think it would take new people to kind of do much more because they're just so successful with what they're doing right now. Um, and I feel the you know, hours of work that they're already putting in, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. I think it would take new people to come in and kind of take on some other things if, if it's the direction they wanted to go. I think it would start with recruitment, like the right point. Well, I just want to say I'm sorry that I had to cancel last minute and that meeting didn't work out. I apologize. No apologies necessary. You have to do what you have to do and take care of yourself. And it was still a great conversation. We weren't going to make any decisions or vote on anything, you know? Um, but I feel like the connection, the seed was planted in the same way that I had intended. Um, so hopefully future conversations will just be that much easier because we all are comfortable around each other now. Um, Susie, would you like to give an a update from council? Um, sure. So um, tomorrow we're going to be having a discussion on the airport. So um, we've been hearing a lot of complaints. Um, there's been a lot more airplane activity. I don't know if you all have, have noticed or heard it or been impacted. And um, primarily around the touch and goes, you know, they come and they land for a bit and then they go back up. We have some airplane schools that are operating out of our airport. So that's increased the activity. So I feel like, and I had asked the advisory board as well as staff to come to come to, to speak and, and let's have a discussion but you know what are we having to really look at some building some guardrails and um, policy and practices in place to kind of help <laughs> help facilitate because in, in our in the way the bylaws are written or um, it's really up to the pilot to be mindful of their surroundings. So it's really putting it, the onus on the pilot to be courteous, be a good neighbor. And from what we're hearing from residents and what we're observing is that's not really happening. So 
we're going to have a discussion on that tomorrow. Um, I'm trying to think there was something else. Now we're going to have a discussion. We have one of our council members who's joining virtually. Um, and a couple of times she has come back out and um, it hasn't had a really good interaction with public. So I think, you know, our mayor has asked us to, to act on, um, you know, what can we do? We have to police ourselves. We have to hold each other accountable. So we're going to have a discussion on that as well. So it'll be a lively, <laughs> to be a lively meeting tomorrow. <laughs> And um, I was gone last week because I have um, come out. I'm part of the um, Hispanic Elected Leaders um, Council, HILO, as well as REAL, the Racial Equity and Leadership Council. So we had our meetings before the actual conference started. So I had to leave, uh, I had to fly out a day earlier than the rest. And so I wasn't there the last Tuesday. And then the Tuesday before that was election. So you know, I feel like, oh, it's been a while. <laughs> I have to get jump back into the back into the swing of things. Um, but yeah, I think our biggest those would be our two biggest topics right now. Mm -hmm. Looking at that, and then we're, we continue to look at the land code and what kind of um, adjustments we need to be making the land code to um, address current need and. Um, making sure that we're we're up to date with um, with our policies and practices. So yeah, that's, that's what I have. If anyone has any questions for me, though, do you anticipate that that position is going to be open then in twenty twenty five? Because that's my ward. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, her term is up in twenty twenty five. So I think you know, as far as um, council, so we cannot boot her off of council before her term is up. However, we can, uh, we have the authority, you know, when we're holding each other, uh, each other accountable, is we can say, you know, you can't, you can no longer participate in your boards and commissions or, you know, your, your council seats. Although she cannot, I know we've given her the date, I think it's the 12th of December. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but I, I do know that if she cannot come back, we're going to stop doing virtual for her. So if she's unable to come back, she will have to to vacate her seat. That was my question because I had heard that, so I wasn't sure. Like I heard there was kind of an ultimatum. Yes. Um, yeah. Because we can't, okay. we can't keep doing the, the online. I know, you know, if new COVID yeah. had happened, what, right. you know, virtual would not have been an option. No, I think. Because I think everyone was understanding up to a point, yeah. right? And then yeah. it becomes just like, are you able to do your job? And are you able to and, do your job and yeah. be here for the residents? Yeah. Right. My, myself and me. Um, okay. Well, I will keep that an eye on that then. Um, and also, is it like a public censure process or is it just like yeah. taking away responsibilities? It's it's more like that censure. Yeah. I was looking for that word. I, <laughs> I'm really tired. <laughs> No, I only know because I've been studying for a like a legal ethics exam, and one of the best yes, that that was the one you can get for. He was like, you know, the, the thing where she's not allowed to do that because we said so. Yes, that's that's it. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's all I have. Is that meeting open to the public, or is that a yes? It'll happen during our council meeting on what day? Um, I will tomorrow the airport. I don't know if some if um, the mayor's going to bring it up tomorrow. Okay, but we did get email of okay. The, the, you know, so we, we had some reading. Like this watch, yes. So it'd be like the seven o'clock meeting. Yes, tomorrow. yeah, yeah, regular okay. session. Okay, thank you. Any news from the library profession? To the library. Uh, well, I already brought up, you know, during our conversation about post-election and some of the districts and their board of trustees, you know, just something that I've become aware of and paying a little bit of attention to. Um, also, in Denver, um, and this was in large part led by uh, library staff in Denver, but they, one of the initiatives uh, 
initiatives, I think, that passed in the city was that they're allowed to form a union now, the library class, some of the some of the classifications, the non-professional classifications in the library, but it's it's throughout the city. Um, again, no, no, I don't know what that means. I just just kind of watching those things. Um, and if you find your yourself uh, in in the city of Denver downtown with some extra time, you might make your way to the central library. They just finished a renovation that took at least four to five years or more to complete. And it's pretty phenomenal. Um, in their center. So if you kind of like checking out libraries, like, you know, stop in there and, and look at its, you know, the, the main or like the atrium, it's pretty phenomenal. Some of these big urban libraries are, are pretty amazing. So. That's kind of what I found. Mine for library profession. Others might have. Ray of Sunshine, Jane Clerk. Has everybody seen the New York Times article from the end of October? Yeah. Halloween, libraries, librarians face a crisis of violence and abuse. New York Times. Um, probably should be as close to required reading as I feel comfortable suggesting, but um, very sad. Um, and again, it's not necessarily things that are, you know, blindsiding, brand new, out of nowhere, um, but the, the uptick, the intensification, the uh, mainstream of it all is, is concerning. Can you share the, the date of the article so that it's yeah. relevant. It's Halloween, October 31st. Okay. Uh, and you can also listen to the article. Um, but, you know, talking about the collective trauma of librarians, the sort of like same tone that we talk about, you right. know, um, folks working in emergency response and uh, Healthcare and other areas. It's, you know, again, with the essentialness. Thank you, librarians. Um, you shouldn't, you know, huh, never thought of these um, occupational hazards when I was growing up and, you know, attending story times and, and looking at my librarians. Like, what do you do? You know, um, read books like, could there be a safer job? It's pretty eye opening. Um, anyway, I I didn't get Tracy the link early enough to include <laughs> with the packet. Um, so that's okay. In part, that's why I asked for the date. Look it up. Yeah. You know, so if you don't have your own access, your library card here gets you access. In case you didn't know that, or you needed a reminder. So. Thank you, library. <laughs> so, um, are we allowed? Are we allowed to have like a Google Drive where we can like just share documents or have like a folder? Yeah, this came up a while ago, and yeah. I, I I think we couldn't have that. Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah. We could have Do you remember it somewhere. somewhere. You know, for sure, because anything that's like uh, an official document needs to be a public document, and Google Drive would not be public. You know, I have I have a question or a thought. Um, would this be, you know, on the city or on the library website that has like a little link of the um, library advisory board? resources and then those articles could be in there but they're also accessible to anybody who goes on that website that could be done okay that's my suggestion yeah no that's a good one who do we talk to mm -hmm. i don't know <laughs> well 
Sandy? <laughs> I always go to Sandy. Well, but but I don't know if you go to Sandy. Well, on the city website, are you, you're talking about like on the, the board and commission pages that they all have? Or no? Or are you talking about I'm like talking the about library? the library website. Oh, well, then that's just me. Okay. I mean, because we have uh, a staff person that, that manages the website. So, okay. you know, okay. it would just be a matter of of yeah. you know working with with her to get you know any links or things that we want on there on like create like a resources section under that yeah from your library advisory board yeah here's some recommended yeah. reading or yeah um, seen articles or... I mean the the, the the thing about that which I, I'm all for is to is to make sure it's it's always fresh and doesn't get stale. Mm -hmm. You know, so an article, you know, if you start doing that and you have an article from 30 years ago, it's like, well, I mean, maybe if it's relevant, but, you know, people can tell if you're not updating things like that. But that, that would be the only thing I'd say. But I think there's enough conversation here and things that come out that it would keep it updated. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's unleavened, so I need to make a suggestion like this, but that could also be like an assignment, like, you know, bring an article and then it just gets posted. So there's something fresh going up every month. Mm -hmm. You know, I can still contribute. <laughs> I promise I won't just assign. I want. Are you in education giving out homework? <laughs> I, I like That's it. a good idea. I almost, I almost suggested a Google Classroom page for us to use, but then I thought that really might be short. Mm -hmm. um, I like that the idea of something like this also maybe it enhances the visibility of this board and yeah. its work a little bit. Yeah. Um, and if we can put like a little link or a little pretty graphic um, at some point to connect over to the, you know, applications for the board, mm -hmm. you know, it could be like another just space to reach people. Correct. Thank you. So here we are at the second to last meeting. Are there any comments from this board before we adjourn? Just, I'm always on the schedule, the schedule thing. Yeah. Um, I know that January and the February meeting are supposed to be on long weekends, which I know is like a Monday night, so potentially fine with everyone. It's fine with me, but it might not be fine with everybody. Do want to look at those dates yeah. real quick? And just... I actually, yeah. I don't know if we can meet on a city holiday, can we? No, I think... I don't think we can. We can't. If it's on a Monday... Um, and that happens here throughout the year. We have to we have to reschedule. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, two of those. Yeah, probably we do. It usually happens. This is it can't. Like deja vu. Yeah. Um, so January twentieth can't be on the twentieth. Correct. So last year, the last time this came up, we chose like the week before or the week after. Um, Either Friends, way, whatever the board decides. You can do either. Katie, can you do the 13th or the 27th? Is one preferable to you? Oh my gosh. Um, I'd say the 13th of January is probably better. Is better. Yeah. Oh, it's better. Yeah. I like to. And I have no preference. January. Oh, okay. Let's do January and then we'll jump to February. I'll move that we meet on January the 13th. Somebody second. Oh, second. <laughs> okay, it's done. And then February, same question. Um, the easiest thing would be for us to meet either the 10th or the 24th. I can do the 10th, I prefer the 24th. 
safety wise and no preference. No preference. So your preference is the twenty four. Okay, you win. That means a slightly longer month in, in between January and February. Just mm -hmm. just to notice. Two, three, four, five, six weeks. Sure it's fine. Yeah. And when are the friends meetings again? They are the week after, so they're the fourth Wednesday, Wednesday of the month at six p.m. Okay. And are they virtual or they're important? They are in person. They don't do any virtual. Okay. Okay. But they meet at the library. Yes, in this very room. Oh, so if we good wanted, vibes. If we wanted to, we've got that February. Are meeting the same week that they are. If we wanted to see if we could line up a February, we could. Do that. We could. I think the request from them was to wait until later in the spring. Um, when they, their their next sale is in March. March, in March if, and May. If I want to do it in April, maybe. I don't know. It, nothing was said except right. for spring, but it's a good point. But. Mm -hmm. It is, um, I don't know, it doesn't throw our rhythm off uh, in meeting before their meeting, no. Not that that is tremendously important, but. All right. So our next meeting is December 16th. Hopefully we can all make it in person and I'll follow up with you, Pat. Um, just to confirm what that looks like. And we will adjourn at 8.49 p.m. Thank you.